I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, what inspires me about virtual reality. Uh, my first experience with virtual, uh, virtual reality was in Disney World uh, back in 1994. I had just taken the ride of the future in the Epcot Center where they basically have all of these hydroponically grown uh, vegetables that look like, shaped like uh, Mickey Mouse. And I came out of that experience and then there was a ride of the future uh, virtual reality uh, experience. So I put on the goggles and suddenly I was flying on a um, uh, glider through the future of Los Angeles, which was very scary. It was a uh, post-apocalyptic, Blade Runner looking world that, uh, you know, was very scary for a guy who at the time lived in a trailer in Malibu and m the power from my trailer was run off a car battery. So to see this po post apocalyptic future, this suburbia that never ends was a very uh, scary experience. So uh, I was through with vir virtual reality at that time in my life. I was also really into at that time traveling to third world countries where you could experience a completely different culture like Costa Rica or Guatemala. For 10 bucks a day, suddenly you were transported into another world where you didn't speak the language. So I was very intrigued to have that sort of other world experience. Years later, through a few twists and turns, I ended up in the US military. Uh, my job was psychological operations. And what that means is you're basically a battlefield DJ. Uh, you, you know, we would have cassette tapes. Instead of carrying a, a rifle, you'd carry a loudspeaker on your backpack. You'd have cassette tapes that, you know, had tank noises. So in order to simulate that there's this giant uh, approach coming from the U.S. military, you'd fool the enemy into thinking that they were coming. It would just be a tape, and you'd be with your small squad. Uh, one, I had the experience uh, of doing a joint uh, training exercise, uh, what is it called, uh, a, a joint readiness training exercise in Fort Polk, Louisiana. And this is one of these things where the, the U.S. military spends millions and millions of dollars to give soldiers the experience of being in a, in a war situation. You have to sleep in a tent. You, if, if your food gets shot down, you don't eat. Um, Anyhow, my job at that time was to follow these squad leaders and we had pinned an enemy down in a building. And I had to play Who Let the Dogs Out over and over and over again in an attempt to make them go crazy and surrender. <laughs> so after that, uh, in the reserves, getting, getting, uh, awaiting the call to Iraq, very scary always thinking, okay, 9-11 happened, people, all these soldiers are getting sent overseas. I really didn't want to go. So I was living in this constant fear of getting called up. And I also developed a, a claustrophobia and a fear of flying. I guess it was that, that fear that I was going to get on that plane and go to Iraq and have to kill people. So I went to therapy, various kinds of therapy. Nothing seemed to work. And then I encountered hypnotherapy, which is a sense, a, a type of therapy where you confront your fears and you talk about your experiences. And that actually cleared uh, the, the phobia that I had. So a few years ago, I was very excited to encounter something that Dr. Skip Rizzo at the University of Southern California has developed. It's called a virtual Iraq program. And it's basically a, a, a program where veterans who return from Iraq, who have had an emotional traumatic experience, sit with a psychiatrist and they re-experience the trauma that happened to them in an attempt to overcome and confront their fears. And I have an example for you. Normally you'd be wearing VR uh, goggles. This here is uh, the 3D theater uh, that we have down in, uh, off uh, Dorval, sorry, off of Burloak. Anyhow, this is the, the therapy program. 
So you're essentially, instead of like a video game where you're actually controlling the experience, you are a, a passenger. And in this case, you know, the, the trauma could be that your buddy, your battle buddy died when an IED got blown up. So here you are experiencing the event. There could be a child that runs across the street. Essentially, what you're about to see is the the person that actually controls the experience is, a, is the, your psychologist. So I pan up from there in a second. Here, you know, there's the town, um, whatever, the, the, the program has a bunch of different simulations in it, depending on what your, what your phobias are. So there's the clinician's panel. And as you can see, they, they control the simulation. So here, he, he's able to trigger events, uh, AK-47, a helicopter that goes off. And it's a very effective and proven um, therapy device. So this got me very excited about virtual reality. And here's a village scenario. So a lot of the soldiers coming back, you know, You hear the screaming and the... Actually, uh, with Skip's program, they have a smell machine where they have burning tires. The smell comes up. Whatever it is that's actually take you there. The, the graphics aren't, you know, Crytek-level graphics. They're not meant to, you know, get immersed in the world. They're, they're meant to be slightly low-grade graphics so that your own imagination can interpret the events and make it a personal experience. So virtual reality, it's, it's here. It's a, it's a, it's a proven, uh, effective form of entering a new world. I look at my niece, who I, uh, I saw a couple weeks ago, and we were having a conversation. She was on her phone, and she was actually creating a 3D world uh, in Minecraft. So this is the future. These are the new worlds that we're exploring. And I'm very excited. To, for the guy who, who lived in a trailer in Malibu and, and, and really wanted to experience all these third world countries, to me, the new experiences are virtual. And I, I'm excited to be part of that. Uh, thank you.